What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. It is the long weekend, so I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently for this long weekend, all right? I'm going to be putting out two different videos today, part one and part two. More specifically, I'm going to be covering for both these videos, chips, the semiconductors, the biggest, most popular names in the markets. We've seen names like SMCI go from 50 to 80 to 100 to 200 to over a thousand just over the past few months here. And I want to cover, you know, what as we head towards NVIDIA's earnings on Wednesday, what are the expectations for several of these companies? ARM, AMD, M you smci nvidia we want to know what is going to be happening this week on wednesday we have a very short week ahead of us so part one i want to kind of do an overarching theme coverage part two i want to go down to the nitty-gritty the details technical analysis daily volume profile price action healthy retracements what could we really look to see here on the charts to give us a little bit of an edge going into these earnings now earnings of course is always a coin toss but if you do watch part one which is this video right now until the end i'll let you guys know where the part two is unlisted but the link is there publicly available for those of you guys who want to watch it immediately Everybody else who does not watch until the end, well, part two will come up whenever it's made public, all right? So if you guys haven't yet, of course, smash the like button, engage with the video. Of course, if you guys want more information on trading or if you want live trade with me and several other traders every single day in the market, link in the description below to do so. We got a few signups just last week, more signups than I thought, to be honest. We might close it down after this weekend. We'll wait till everyone that just jumped in gets acclimated and then we'll open back up again, maybe on Thursday, Friday. That being said, guys, without any further ado, here we go. We've kind of already touched on it a little bit, but let's dig deeper now because, of course, this other big test for the market does come next week when NVIDIA reports and today there's this new batch of bullish street commentary ahead of that print. So Christina Partzinevelis joins us now. Just so you guys know, when I do look at different um, price target raises with several different companies, I often look at that as an opportunity for institutions to use retail as exit liquidity, right? Hey, the stock's currently trading at 500 bucks. I think it should be worth 600 bucks. That's what the headline says. So the price kind of goes up. Lots of retail buys in at 550, 560, thinking it's going to go to 600. And the next thing you know, it gets rug pulled back down to 400. And that price target headline was really used as a way to kind of allow institutions to exit their positions and for retail to be the buyers of those bags, right? So just keep that part in mind as we do go forward with all this, you know, price raising headlines coming out here because it can be very sketchy territory, right? Let's keep going. With the details, Christina, go through what uh, what all these bulls are saying ahead of actually getting the numbers. The big question today is who has the bigger price target? And today it is Loop New Street at 1,200 bucks. That's 65 percent upside from yesterday's close. There's others that threw an 850 today. Oppenheimer, they think, and this is uh, Loop. They think Nvidia will not only beat expectations, but, but will provide more upside to its full fiscal year 2025 estimates because they are at the front end of this GPU generative AI cycle. Yes, there is. Competition, and they believe that it's still far out enough that NVIDIA will benefit from uh, the first mover advantage. Analysts also writing, we're going to party like it's 1995 with the dot-com bubble, you know, coming just a few years later. So is that a good sign I to know, put that right? as the title of your note? Like I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but especially when NVIDIA's share price. A whole lot of red flags right now. A whole lot of, and listen, I personally have a rule of thumb that I have to keep to myself, which is do not shorten video. I've lost thousands of dollars shorting in video, and I've publicly said this many times before, in 2023, 2022. I've, I've been there, okay? I've, I've seen the perfect setup that have gone the opposite directions too many times before to think that I am going to outsmart the market in shorting this stock. I know myself, and you should know yourself, okay? Be careful with shorting this stock. I'm just saying it also sounds like some red flags with the whole, you know, very similar relationship to the dot-com bubble and these names, but I do, do not get that twisted as me going short in NVIDIA. I simply will not. It's literally climbed $542 in just one year alone. And we can't speak of price appreciation without bringing up Super Micro, the real winner this year. Its share price has gone from $95 to over $1,000 at yesterday's close. It's down today on an equal weighted report from Wells Fargo, pointing out to some competition um, from competitors. The stock is down 12%. This is a company that designs server racks and storage clusters. It's known for power efficiency, all the more important when we're building up these large language models. But Super Micro is reliant on NVIDIA. Wells Fargo points out that 68% of total Q2 purchases mm. came from NVIDIA in 2024. Another big customer could be CoreWeave for Supermicro, which NVIDIA is a big backer. You notice how everybody's Everybody connected, connected back yeah. to NVIDIA? And last but not least, I have to keep the theme going, right? Speaking of NVIDIA, ARM share price has right. soared as well, counts NVIDIA as an AI investor, as an investor. ARM makes the designs for <laughs> chips found in everything from computers, phones, uh, fridges, you ARM should definitely be on your watch list moving forward. We spoke about this for the last three, four weeks. For those of you guys in the Discord, you guys know I've played this four to five times correctly. 
arm should definitely be on the watch list. Name it, and they say that they're going to benefit from all of these products shifting over to the AI revolution, but that shift hasn't necessarily started yet. But the price appreciation in this stock has just skyrocketed. And I think look that's that the chart. theme. I mean, look at this. That is, and I, Joe, you briefly maybe mentioned it today or previously, that theme that it's not, it's, forget the beat on the earnings, the current cycle, or even the following cycle guidance, but it's just like, what are they going to say about growth in, you know, the next year, two years? We need that sustainability to keep that conviction in the market yep. for this AI trade. And that's what NVIDIA can show us next week. So much hanging on that report. Bill, I know you don't own NVIDIA, but you do own ARM. Oh, I do own NVIDIA. Oh, so it's actually our number, okay. uh, my number four position. Oh, thank you for correcting. Uh, okay. right, it's, been, it's been a big leader of ours uh, for a while, and we've had to kind of just work through managing that from a, from a portfolio portfolio standpoint and, it, and we cut it by a third around, ahead of AMD's earnings and it's right back into number oh four. Gosh. It went down to number nine, now it's number four. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm excited for these earnings. I, I think though when it comes to if everybody's expecting something, we continue to see price targets rise and rise and rise, it creates and feeds speculation and that speculation needs to unwind. And again, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I'm looking at the, the call skew here. There's a lot of calls being purchased. People sell those calls, uh, the market makers do, and those things have to start to unwind once that risk is known of earnings. If it's not an absolute blowout, but even if it is a blowout, I think some of that could unwind and we go through a consolidation similar to what we had after August. But, you know, overall, though, I, I don't think it just, I don't think it derails the, the entire play here. I think the AI play is going to continue to, to build as the, as the year unfolds. We do own ARM as well, and it's a small position in ARM to start, and, and, it, and right away it, it took off. I'm more or less just kind of waiting for this to consolidate. I, you know, I know there's a lot of speculation out there about ARM with the, the I think it's a March 12th uh, lockup period that ends for, for holdings. Yeah. And, yeah, it's all that is very important as well. March 12th, note that down on your calendar if you are watching, you know, ARM. As a, as a trader or investor or whatever it might be important. Bank and, and I think some of that is, is something that you have to be aware of in some of these stocks like, like an arm or if you're watching a super microcomputer, the volatility that these things happen. And, and it's just to continue to fuel a lot of speculation. But it's important to manage your risk and know what you're expecting about out of this. And that's why we're positioning sizing in something like arm small enough that we can withstand the volatility. But we plan to hold it for three to five years. I, I think that thing could 4x over that time, if not more. Wow. How are you managing? So, you have both in the in your Joe well, T. From an industry perspective, semiconductors are by far our largest holding. Okay. Right? We're, we're momentum based. And like this is where I think the, the risk really is for bubble. I'm not saying that these are going to come down. I do think companies like ARM do have a lot of upside, right? But this is where it starts to come into things where it's like, the, the largest holding for them is chips. The largest holding for them is chips. The largest holding for them is chips. I was like, oh, okay. So everyone's largest holding is chips. If Nvidia has some sort of horrible earnings, it could be catastrophic for the market. Again, I'm not going short NVIDIA, but these are times, in my opinion, to be cautious. I could actually see NVIDIA and several other chip makers seeing a substantial amount of upside after these earnings. I just don't know how long that can continue at this rate and what that return would be if you are uh, playing on playing earnings or going along with calls, riskier, you know, weekly calls, very short expiration dates. Like, it's a short week already, but also, you know, the earnings are on Wednesday after hours, so you have Thursday, Friday. Anyways, point being is, just simply be careful, be cautious. And if you really want to trade one of these things, if you really want to get in and out and have some fun, feel free to trade a share. You know? Okay, so what happens if NVIDIA goes up 200 bucks or it goes down 200 bucks? Maybe that's your risk level. You don't have to trade options and go from zero to hero, right? So anyways, keep going. Then we're tracking also <laughs> quality as a factor. So yeah, semiconductors are going to be right up there. Um, I think first in the case of, of, of super micro, it could be a little bit of both arguments. It can be, yes, they have the relationship with NVIDIA, so that's a fundamental catalyst. Then it also can be what Mike Santoli's done a great job talking about the last several day, a little bit of a return to that speculative behavior that we saw in 2021. And keep that in mind, because the IWM ETF, which is equally weighted, right now, wherever IWM is gonna trade is where Super Micro is gonna take it so that's what we spoke about on Friday's video. Because Super Micro, um, Super Micro is 1% mm -hmm. of that actual ETF, whereas the rest of the holdings are only 35 basis points. So you have to keep that in mind. In the case of NVIDIA, where it sits right now, obviously we have ownership. I would not put fresh capital into NVIDIA at this price. NVIDIA could go to 1,000. At some point, you'll be able to find the dip. You'll be able to get the opportunity if you have fresh capital to put into NVIDIA. But I don't think that defeats overall 
what's a really strong story for semiconductors? Mm. And you saw that last night with Applied Materials. Oh, yes. I mean, they are the largest semi equipment maker in the United States. You had some insight from KLA Corp and from LAM Research. It was going to be good. And for the dynamic random access memory chips, this demand from China was incredibly strong. And the outlook, to your point, they were confident that that's going to continue. But Christina, not everyone is like Loop Capital with the 1200 price target. I think you said Oppenheimer up to two. But there are other analysts yeah. that are like, hey, look, we, we could go the other way. Oh, there's, What's the there's no sell, uh, Nobody's saying to sell this company sure. or anything like that. So let me start with that. But I think there's a little bit more caution. Bank of America, as an example, uh, just because they don't believe that the upside will be as big as it was previously. I think last quarter, 10, 11 percent. The quarter before that, a 22 percent beat. So it's really hard to keep that momentum. And the other concern, too, is supply. So, you know, there might be a cap on how high NVIDIA can come out with this earnings report because of the supply constraints, which bodes well for the following quarters, but puts a limit. So should that be the case, and you mentioned the options market playing a big role with NVIDIA, yes. we could see a downtick. <clears throat> on the upside, for our viewers to know, on average, NVIDIA tends to trade 6 percent higher after the big AI event, which is happening March 18th. And this is uh, on average of a six-year uh, range. So that could be an opportunity if investors are looking, hey, the stock drops post-earnings, there's going to be another catalyst just a few weeks later. I like that a lot. I think that's really... That is a very key point there. If there is an opportunity to buy the dip and you've been waiting for a long period of time, not telling you what to do, not financial advice, just my opinion, maybe it's worthwhile starting to look there because you'll have an opportunity to see some very quick upside in regards to a potential great long-term holding. But... Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, that's where we're going to leave everything for now. Uh, I do want to put TSM on this watch list as well, but we'll get to that for the part two video, guys. If you haven't yet, of course, smash the like button, engage with the video. Part two will come out in a few hours for everybody else who stopped watching this video a long time ago. For those of you guys who are still watching this video, thank you guys very much, of course. The unlisted link for part two should be in the description below here, okay? So feel free to take a look at that, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Much love. Deuces.